Should you spend $500 plus on an HTPC when you can get most of the basic features on this for 50 bucks? Well, stay tuned because we're gonna explore that today. Hey guys, welcome to Elevated Systems. I'm your host, CJ, and welcome to my family room. We're outside the studio today, so, well, forgive the echo, but I brought you down here because today we'll be taking a look at the practicality of owning a home theater PC in late 2020. Now, this is my HTPC that I built a few months back. If you're interested in this build you can check it out here and i'll link it in the description below but basically this is a ryzen 5 2400g apu only system and is built to act as a home theater setup if you have a larger system with a dedicated graphics card and you do more than just stream video and audio like well game well then you have a gaming pc that just happens to be connected to your home theater that's a whole different thing, and that's not really what I'll be discussing in this video. No, today we're going to take a look at some features that you get from a home theater PC, and then compare them to the features you get with streaming devices like the Fire Stick and the Roku that's built right into my TV. Let's start with the HTPC, and nowadays this is a common form factor for an HTPC, Maybe a step up in size to something like an NCASE M1. Back when I first started building dedicated HTPCs, they were giant. You needed a full ATX motherboard with plenty of PCIe support for the graphics card because, well, that was the only way to get HDMI output. A sound card because, yeah, well, that was a thing. A LAN card and, of course, a TV tuner card. But nowadays, all of that, well, except for the TV tuner, is integrated right into the motherboard. This mini ITX one even has Wi-Fi. And when I turn it on, the biggest feature of an HTPC is, well, it's a PC and, and paired with a little keyboard trackpad combo, I have a fully functional desktop computer right from the comfort of my couch. I can browse the web with my favorite web browser. And run any app or software I want, including the streaming video and music services. If I have a local digital media library, I can play it directly from the system using something like VLC Media Player. Yep. Old Doom Eternal. Or I can stream it from, say, a Plex server somewhere else on my home network. Now, what I can't do is stream any of those digital services in 4K. Now, I've already said this is a fully featured motherboard and it does have HDMI 2.0, which supports 4K 60 FPS. So my desktop resolution is in fact 4K. And I can even watch YouTube videos in 4K. <laughs> Look, Ma, I'm on TV. But that's about it for 4K content because in addition to HDMI 2.0, which I mentioned this system does have, the system also needs to have HDCP 2.2 support. HDCP is high bandwidth digital content protection and it's a security feature which prevents capturing copyrighted content. Now, this CPU can support HDCP 2.2, but the motherboard doesn't. In fact, most AMD motherboards don't. The only ones that I know do are some of the Aorus motherboards. Aorus is the higher end motherboard models from Gigabyte and do command a higher end price point. Now, there may be more manufacturers for Ryzen that have HDCP 2.2, or are just the ones that I've personally tested and no work. 
But even for those, you need to do your research. For example, the X570i Aorus Pro Wi-Fi has HDCP 2.2, but only for the Ryzen 3200G or 3400G, not this 2400G. So if you're building a Ryzen APU based HTPC and you want 4K support, you need to do your research. Or you can go with an Intel solution because all Intel CPUs since the seventh gen have HDCP 2.2 support. And of course, if you go with a dedicated graphics card, pretty much all modern GPUs have it. But even if you do your research and build a system with all the right specs, the only service you'll be able to stream in 4K from your PC is Netflix. That's it. It's the only one that allows it. In fact, the best you can do in some of these apps is 720p. 720p on a 4K TV, I mean, what's the point? So while I did feature this HTPC build on the channel and intended to use it as my personal home theater PC, I never actually used it. That's because I got, well, this TV. Now, this isn't a super high-end TV. In fact, I picked this up for around 400 to 450 bucks. I got it from AFI, so I'm not sure what it cost in the civilian world, but it's a pretty cost-effective solution for a 65-inch 4K TV, and it has Roku TV built in. So now I have all those streaming apps available right from my remote control. And if you have the proper subscription, they stream in 4K and even 4K HDR. So I have Netflix in 4K, Prime Video has tons of 4K content, Disney Plus 4K, Hulu, I, I don't use Hulu too much. It came free with my cell phone plan, but I'm pretty sure at least their original content is available in 4K. I rent 4K movies from Vudu, especially since movie theaters around here are still closed. There's even a YouTube and Twitch channel. But what really impressed me was the available Plex app. I set up a Plex server on my main system up in the studio because it's a multitasking beast. Loaded it with my personal library and I stream it over my home network and it, it just works. I even re-encode my content to X265 to save a lot of storage space. So it needs to transcode back to X264 to stream and there's no lag, no buffering. I even tested 4K content and it works great. Now, Roku works great for content on my TV, but I also have a digital projector up there on the ceiling and it's not a smart projector, it's a dumb projector. There's even still an HDMI cable running across my ceiling. So I can connect it to the HTPC, but I was in Best Buy one day, you know, back when you can actually go inside Best Buy, and I saw this Fire Stick 4K on sale. And while my TV is hardline connected, the Fire Stick was only Wi-Fi, but I connected it to my five gigahertz network and it worked. All the same apps, 4K, Plex, no problems. The Fire Stick even has the Silk web browser, which isn't too bad. And it has built-in Alexa voice control. So because of all the functionality and options I have with a $50 device like this, I retired my HTPC before I even used it. I actually had to put it back together and bring it down here just for this video. Now, this isn't a sponsored video. Roku, Amazon, they didn't pay me to do this, but because of the current lack of many PC components, I've been getting a lot of questions about alternative configurations on my HTPC build videos, and I figured I'd provide this alternative alternative. Now, there are still some great arguments for an HTPC, especially if you live in an area where one or more of the streaming services aren't available. While you can set up a network-wide VPN, it's much easier to do on a single computer. There's also the unofficial streaming sites. Now, I'm not promoting them, but I know they exist and are usually easier to run on a PC than, say, the Amazon Silk browser. 
For those of you who still want to build an HTPC in this form factor, at the time of filming this video in August 2020, I think the best option for finding available components is probably to go with an Intel system. Something like the 8th or 9th gen i3 processor with a less expensive locked 300 series chipset motherboard. One of the less expensive two core four thread Celerons will even work fine for streaming. Or you can even step up to say the i3-10100 on a B460 board. Now, keep in mind that the Intel integrated graphics, while great for 2D video, aren't really designed for 3D graphics, so you won't be doing light esports type gaming on an Intel APU system like you can with the AMD Vega graphics. But that's pretty much it, guys. I, this was just a quick update on where I think dedicated streaming HTPC stand in late 2020. I'm sure I'll get many contradictory opinions on this one, which is cool. Like I said, this was just my opinion based on my personal use case. If you think I made a value argument, go ahead and throw a like on this video. If you disagree, well, like it anyway, and then leave your counter argument in the comment section. Let me know why I should keep my Inwin B1 build right here hooked up. Oh, but if your argument includes hesitations with connecting your TV to the internet, this one doesn't have a camera or even a microphone built in. And you actually have to push the microphone button on the Fire Stick remote for Alexa to hear you. Anyway, that's it for this one, guys. Hopefully you learned at least one new thing. That's always my primary goal. I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, stay safe.